Thanks for tuning in to a Saturday edition of the starting lineup on Prime Sports Network, Darlington, the cookout Southern 500. And look who's on the pole, Bubba. That's right, Mr. Bubba, who we talked about on Tuesday's show as uh, one of my top three picks. My top pick, along with CJ's, uh, it's no surprise. I mean, we went with Tyler Reddick. I think uh, I think a lot of you guys will probably go with Tyler Reddick this week, especially after the way he's looked so far today. Uh, CJ also went with Busher and Gregson, and I went with uh, Chastain. So we'll get into how those drivers fared in just a little bit. But there you go, Bubba Wallace. He is on the pole at the Cookout Southern 500. Let's take a look at... The rest of the speed charts. Here they are. The care of Jayski. And there you can see Bubba's on the pole. And what we also notice is, is that you got a couple. Uh, actually, you have uh, one Toyota on the pole, but you also have these two Toyotas here, Truex and Reddick. So you got three of the top six Toyotas. But you do. It's interesting because you do have five out of the top twelve are Fords. Even though Ford did not fare very well in practice. So there are some uh, conflicting speed charts here to try to analyze. And it's not going to be so easy. So I think because of that, you just got to go back to your basics. And we'll try to do that uh, as well in just a bit. So uh, as far as the top 10 qualifiers, let's just stick with those. Okay. So as far as these top 10, let me see if I can blast these. Oh, it's already blasted up. Let me see if I can do it some more. Yeah, I do that, and they shrink the page. All right, I don't think it matters much. Okay, so here we go. So let's start with the uh, top ten, the ones that went all the way down to the final uh, session. And out of these top ten, five of them also were top ten in practice. They were Bubba, Carson Hosevar, Kyle Larson, Tyler Reddick, and William Byron. So those are your five that really look like they are heads above the rest after a successful day in qualifying and practice. Let's go to the rest of the field here. And as far as the rest of the field, Denny Hamlin only 14th, but, but second fastest of practice. So the top three drivers, Larson coming in, Hamlin and Reddick, all look like they're going to be the top three drivers again. Okay. And then you have Kyle Busch. Everybody's wondering if Kyle Busch can steal a win late. Final chance to get to the postseason. But just like the way it's been for Kyle Busch and RCR this season, not very fast. Matter of fact, they were worse in practice. Chase Elliott, not very fast. Just 14th in practice. Now, Ross Chastain, I was real glad to see that he did finish fourth in practice. So that is uh, still giving me hope that Ross Chastain may not be a bad long shot play. Joey Logano, forget him, really slow. Matter of fact, his teammate, Ryan Blaney, who was up here at seventh, which uh, was a good start for Ryan, but I don't know what they were trying before that in practice because that didn't work. They were pretty far down the charts, all the way to 33rd. But they are starting 7th, so maybe they knew what they were doing after practice, as far as the setup was concerned. Bowman at 27th doesn't look fast at all, not even in the top 15 in practice. Now, Eric Jones, here's an interesting one. Eric Jones, 28th, you know, not, not good at all, but don't forget, as we talked about with Eric Jones on the show uh, on Tuesday, Eric Jones has two wins at Darlington, 19, 19, uh, 2019 and 2022. And he started both of those wins in 15th place. So he didn't qualify very well there and still won. Now, this is farther back, but keep in mind, fastest in practice. This is a good track for Eric Jones. And because he starts 28th, I will. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt that he's gonna get. He's gonna end up with pretty decent odds. I doubt we're gonna have the odds available right now because it's pretty early. I'm gonna go ahead while I'm talking and see if I can punch up 
uh, any, maybe I'm lucky and I'll get some odds here. Let's see. Oh, I just killed a gnat. I like it when I kill gnats. Oh, they're not going to let me do that. Okay. No, I can't do it. Let me see. Is there another way? Yeah, I don't think, I think it's too early. Okay, anyway. Uh, let's, maybe that's the last thing I'll do before I cut the show off. All right, so where are we? Uh, the rest, really nothing here to look at as far as the rest of the field. Okay, so there you go. That's qualifying. And uh, we told you a little, I guess what we could do is is uh, flip on over to practice. But, um, and I'm going to also, of course, fill you in with what we talked about earlier this week regarding uh, what to keep an eye on as far as the trends for the race as I scroll down here, man, this is just, they just make it really hard. I don't know why. All right, there it is. Okay. So let me go ahead and get you, because I'm going to post up the practice speeds, by the way. Well, might as well, let's do that now. So there's J-Ski. Here are the practice speeds. Okay, so there's Eric Jones first. Stenhouse third. Keep that in mind as well. But Stenhouse hasn't ever shown anything. Let me see. I'm pretty sure Stenhouse has never shown anything. Nope, he's never. He's never led a lot. One top 10 out of 17, so forget uh, Ricky Stenhouse. It, 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 it was unusual to see Chase Briscoe starting third, but uh, unfortunately, 32nd. There he is, all the way down there, 32nd, right next to Ryan Blaney. So, yeah. And Martin Truex Jr., after a, a really good fifth place run? Yeah, not so good earlier in practice, but like Ryan Blaney, he did make a big move up. So we'll have to respect that. Chase Bell, meanwhile, he had a couple of just average runs. 9th and 13th. Busher, again, average. 10th and 15th. Kozlowski, 12th and 11th. Okay. So there are some drivers out there that still uh, look like they might have a shot. All right. So these are the practice speeds here from earlier today. So let's uh, go over some of the trends that might matter here. And that is the fact that when we talked about starting position... We talked about how important it was for qualifying position, okay? So 21 of the last 28 winners started in the top 12, those first six rows. That's a 75% clip. The farthest back during that stretch, you started 23rd. So anybody outside that top 23, not looking good right now, just according to those trends. So you got to keep that in mind. That would be right, right about there, right? So any of those drivers... 24th and down not in good position but i'll tell you right now you know i mean the only one there that i would even think of is jones because bowman doesn't have uh, a history at darlington so uh, you know i mean bowman has led just one lap in his last eight races there one career top five so i'm not really worried about bowman but jones you know i think that again if you could still get good odds on jones and i'm talking about is 40 to 1 50 to 1 60 to 1 that kind of area why not right like we said with Dylan a few weeks ago, why not throw a buck on him? Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, as far as Toyota, now this is the change, okay? So, but maybe it's not such a change. Remember, we had told you that Toyota hadn't won there in the last five appearances. Okay, but oh, and and and, uh, and by the way, Ford. Uh, Actually, you know what? Before we go with Ford, let's stay, let's stay, stay on Toyota because what I want to uh, remind everybody is – what we talked about is, is that even though Toyota hasn't had a win in the last five there, they had the fastest car there in May in the Goodyear 400. Even though Kozlowski won, okay, it was Redick who led 174 laps from the pole. Matter of fact, don't forget what we told you is, is that – or, or reminded you is is that I believe it was the first five drivers, uh, four or five drivers from the pole positions where the where the drivers that led the most laps. OK, so you had Reddick from the pole leading 174. You had Kozlowski winning the race from the second position at thir with 37. You had Busher. Uh, he led 21 from the third position and Gibbs led 34 from the fourth position. And I think there's another one in there, too. I don't remember exactly who that is. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know exactly who that is. But I think there was another one in there. That might have been fifth or sixth. Okay, I don't know. I know Briscoe was fifth. So keep that in mind. Now, Chase Briscoe was fifth this year. It was his only top five ever. And he's following that up 
with a third positioning, qualifying wise. So, okay. So maybe Chase Briscoe isn't the worst, a long shot idea too. All right, so there you go. Uh, positioning up front, very important. Uh, six of the last eight winners started in the top eight, including first, second, and second. Okay, here's an interesting one though. Only one pole sitter has won since 2015. That was Joey Logano in 2022. I'm not going to worry about that too much. I think that's probably just a little bit of uh, coincidence because there's just way too many drivers that are performing well up front that I would concern myself with that. So, but could we be looking at the same thing as May? The first four drivers? I mean, that would mean Bubba Wallace, Car Carson Hosevar, and Chase Briscoe would be in that mix. Okay, so that's it. But how about this for Carson Hosevar? How about this? All right. Carson Hosevar, who will be starting second, was ninth in practice, driving a Chevy. He he was sixth in his in an Xfinity Series race, his only Xfinity Series race at Darlington last year, from the 25th position. That sixth place finish was his best ever Xfinity Series result. All right, he had five. That's his best. But how about this too? It. In Darlington, in the truck series, in four races, he's got three top fives and a 2022 runner up. So Carson Hosevar likes Darlington. And now he's second. So there are some pretty good long shots there. But look, I'm not putting money on Hosevar if he's if he's anything lower than sort of like Jones. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't know if I'd go with 30 to 1. That's my limit. That 30 to 1 range. But if you're getting 40 to 1, 50 and higher, hey, you know what? Hosevar, Briscoe, Jones. Those, now, we didn't like many long shots at all on Tuesday, but now there are a few long shots that might be popping up. I know you're going to lose some of the odds break coming down from Tuesday, but, well, it's worth it because you never would have taken these drivers anyway. All right. Uh, now, as far as the drivers that are in contention the ones that we're really serious about definitely Bubba because uh, uh, don't forget we like Bubba why did we like Bubba because if you take a look at his history here in his last four races seventh seventh fifth and ninth all right that's a really good run for Bubba four top tens total matter of fact uh, let me see if I can pop that up here as we talk and in the uh, but anyway the fact is is that he really is putting this together at a perfect time which is why i went with bubba and chastain because they showed me enough as far as picks they showed me enough that i was like well i really have to consider them they're right there teetering on the cutoff line as far as making the postseason. They probably, they may have to win. Probably have to win. And so that's the, and, and, and as far as Chastain, again, not a good qualifying run, but he did get off to a good start with that practice run. So I have no idea what, what happened from practice to qualifying. You know, maybe they stayed with the same program and realized it wasn't working in practice. But, you know, I looked, look, they got some positive information out of it. And it's up to them to see if they can figure it out because they haven't been able to figure out a whole lot this year, especially lately. Chastain, taking a look at his numbers in his career at Darlington, the reason why I think he's a decent long shot still is that uh, he was 11th earlier this year. Okay, all right, that's okay. It's average. In last year's race, he was fifth. This race last year. And in the uh, May race last year, he led 93 laps from the fifth position, and then, he, and then he had a wreck. All right, so his last three efforts at Darlington have been pretty good. They've been pretty good, especially for a long shot. I think he was 22 to 1 uh, at, at my sports book before we had qualifying and practice today. Uh, Busher was another one, of course, that we talked about. This is CJ's uh, second choice. And again, these are the, like that middle ground. We have the favorite, we have the middle ground, sleeper, long shot, and then the really deep long shots. That's 
sometimes how we do it. I did it with two medium long shots, Chastain and Wallace. Uh, but Busher is a good play because of the fact that if you look at him, uh, even though he had a bad result this year, don't forget what happened. This was the situation where Busher was there late. He gets into trouble with Redick. That opened the door with a uh, an easy win for for Kozlowski. But it could have been without the wreck. It could have Busher or Chastain. Excuse me, Busher or Redick would have finished second or third at the worst. Okay, so that would have been a top three, leading 21 laps from third position. And then in the race last year, he was third. And then in the race in May last year, he was 10th. So he really has, just like Bubba and Chastain, Busher, Wallace, and Chastain have really done well at Darlington over the last several races. Uh, Larson, again, there's not a whole lot more to talk about with Larson and Reddick and Hamlin. Because we know that uh, they're the favorites for a reason. Again, Hamlin's got four wins, fourth this year. Uh, Larson's got the win last year. He is the defending champ, keeping in mind that he was a, a, a lot stronger pre-Next Gen than Next Gen, as we went over on the show on Tuesday. You can check that out. And then Reddick, we'll have a link there. Uh, and then Reddick, of course, is just red hot right now. He's the hottest driver in the Cup Series, and he's been very good in the next gen here, leading a combined 274 laps, including the 174 this year, and 90 in last year's race when he finished second. Now, as far as Truex, who looks like he's going to get in no matter what he does, as long as he doesn't, you know, crash in the first lap and other drivers do crazy positive things, because uh, he's 58 points up, uh, he's, he's got a 25.8 average in the next gen. But he's had two wrecks and a DVP. Okay, so without those, he has led a combined 221 laps with the next gen. He does have two wins over his career, led nearly a thousand laps in his career over 24 races. But you're probably going to get around eight to ten to one on Truex, and I don't know. I mean, wouldn't you rather take Reddick, Hamlin, or Larson at five to one than Truex at eight to one? So if you're getting ten to one. Consider it, maybe. That I probably still wouldn't. I mean, they're just so stone cold right now, the Truex camp. That, uh, yeah, it's. I need. A, I need a lot more than double my money to go with Truex instead of one of those guys. Look, if you want to go ahead and take one of the Larson Hamlin and uh, Reddick uh, drivers and Truex, and that's your picks for the day. Throw in a long shot. That's okay. So not, not wrong with that. I just. It's hard for me to think about Martin Truex Jr. in a positive light right now uh, at such a low number. Uh, remember that CJ really liked Noah Gregson because he's just awesome in the Xfinity Series at this racetrack. And he did improve from 26th to 14th in the Cup Series in his two races from last year to this year. But I don't know what's going on here. Just taking a look. Uh, Gregson, uh, again, just uh, he'll be starting 29th. And he qualified 28th. Not, not good at all. All right. So there you go. Uh, Reddick starting 6th. Uh, with the seventh uh, 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 practice run, uh, still looks like the uh, driver to beat. Uh, I know Larson uh, also strong up there, fourth and tenth. Hamlin again, fourteenth and second. But uh, I just feel a lot more confident with Wallace now that he's on the pole, and I still feel confident with Chastain as a long shot since he was fourth in practice. I don't think Chastain's numbers are going to move that much. Wallace though will. Now will will it drop? Well. I don't know if he's going to go to 10 to 1. If it does, I don't know if I'd take him at 10 to 1. I think he might have missed the boat. But if you could still get Wallace like 12 or 14 to 1, uh, I think he's definitely a good play, remembering how important this race is to him. And uh, I guess the uh, the other couple of uh, drivers just to mention, Christopher Bell just has one top five at this track in 10 races. And he's an average of 16.4, uh, which is nothing great. He did lead 40 laps from the pole in this year's race, though, but just 13th this year. So, I don't know. I mean, look, if you're getting 12-1 to 1 or 14-1 to 1 with Christopher Bell, which is possible, okay, it's possible, then it's not the craziest idea in the world. Matter of fact, I'd rather take Christopher Bell than Martin Trucks Jr., and I'd rather take Christopher Bell than Bubba Wallace, again, if the odds are equal, and they might be. And then William Byron, remember, he got the win in... Actually, last year's race, one of last year's races, but he only led seven laps. Okay, but he does have four top fives with the win in 12 races. And in his last four races at Darlington, sixth, fourth, 
first and eighth. So William Byron is not a bad idea, especially considering he is a very quiet eighth in qualifying and a, an even better fifth in practice. So if if and, and you might be getting. 10 to 12 to 1 on Byron once and that's why again I'd rather take Byron and Shrex I'd rather take Byron over Wallace if the numbers are pretty equal and I'd probably take Byron over Bell to tell you the truth so if, if all of those drivers I just talked about are all in that 10 to 14 range uh, Byron is probably the one to go with based on uh, some of his recent history and the fact that he's looked pretty good today okay so I believe we have wrapped it all up for you. Again, we're going to have a link in the description for the show we did on Tuesday. We also will have a link to CJ's rotowire.com fantasy report. You can check that out. Uh, join us next week when we preview the playoffs. Now, we're going to try to go live. Okay, that's the hope. So if we do that, it'll be at 4 o'clock live on Tuesday. And hopefully uh, we'll get the opportunity to mingle with you guys live. Uh, it's not a promise, but that's what we're aiming for. I'll check with uh, CJ early in the day. If he says four is fine, it gives me the thumbs up. And I feel good about it as well. Then we'll go live. All right. It'll be our playoff preview coming up on Tuesday. We'll also, of course, preview the race at Atlanta. Good luck. If you have any questions, comments, obviously let me know what's on your mind. Love all the positive comments. Even the negative ones are fine. And we'll talk to you guys again in a few days. Best of luck on Sunday. If we have a race on Sunday, I haven't checked the weather. But hopefully the, the weather will be fine. Uh, and we'll we'll see you soon. We'll talk to you, we'll talk to you soon. Good luck uh, tomorrow here on Prime Sports Network. And yes, one more thing. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>